Hello everyone, welcome. So it is finally the start of the new year and I'm really excited because the end of the year slash the beginning of the year is my favorite time to make videos because there are so many great end of the year reading videos to make, wrap ups, favorite books, least favorite books, all those things. And this year, while I'll still be making my traditional favorite and least favorite books of the year video, I also wanted to do something new because I saw Jenny from This Story Ain't Over do this on her channel where she reviewed every book that she read in 2022 in one sentence. And I just thought it was such a great clever idea. So full credit to her. I will leave her original video linked in the description box if you want to go watch it. I just really like the idea so I really wanted to do it too. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Basically I'm just going to go over kind of like my general reading stats from the year and then I'm just going to get into literally every book that I read in 2022 and we're going to talk about all 87 of them because yes I actually read 87 books last year which is not compared to a lot of people but it's a lot compared to others and it's a lot compared to me over the past couple of years. So I'm really happy and satisfied with how much I read last year. I believe in in 2020, I think I only read like nine books. I really didn't read a lot, which was so weird for me. Last year, I think I read around like 20 something books, like 25, 29 maybe, which for me is also a really low number. So to have read 87 books this year was a really big difference and it felt like I was getting back to like my old self again. I think on average I typically read about like 50 or so books a year but I've read like up to 100 before so 87 was very solid um, and I really loved the majority of what I read this year. I had some really bad times. Um, <laughs> there were a couple months there where I read a lot of bad books although those were mostly intentional. I did read some manga series this year so I read like 10 or 8 volumes for example of certain series so I'm not going to separate those those and give you a sentence review for each of those because I feel like I don't even know if I can distinguish between the separate volumes at this point for some of them. So I'll just give you like a one sentence review of all the volumes that I read, if that makes sense. Really quickly before we get into every book that I read, I want to both remind you and thank you all for your support of the Clockwork Reader Reading Journal over this past year. Um, I released my reading journal last December and so now it's been out for a year, a little bit over a year at this point, and it's so exciting seeing you all use it at the beginning of the year, seeing the filled up ones from last year. So if if you're looking for a reading journal to track your reading for the new year, if you want to write reviews, make little collages, or just keep track of your favorite authors, um, favorite upcoming releases, things like that, you can use this reading journal. So yes, again, thank you all so much for your support and the journal over the past year. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. I'm so glad you guys are loving it, and I'm very excited for you all to see what might be coming in the future. That's all I'll say. But now, without any further ado, let's get into every book I read in 2022, summed up in one sentence. Starting off, I read volumes 1 through 10 of Yona of the Dawn. Yona of the Dawn is perfect for fans of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood or Avatar The Last Airbender, who also love a slow, slow burn romance. Five out of five stars. Next, I read Ain't Burnt All the Bright by Jason Reynolds. This is a three sentence poem on the effects of COVID, social movements, and politics on our culture and lives over the past few Few years told through these collage style photography and like images. Four out of five stars. She and her cat, this was a manga, her cat loves her a little too much. Two out of five stars. <laughs> Five centimeters per second, another manga. Everything I wanted normal people by Sally Rooney to be, and so much more. 4.75 to five out of five stars. Bluets by Maggie Nelson. A series of vignettes all related to the color blue, and I liked it in concept a lot more than I liked the execution, because it felt a little bit too convoluted. Three out of five stars. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Possibly my new all-time favorite classic, because I loved everything from the writing, to the social commentary, to the vibes. Five out of five stars. Convenient Store Woman by Saya Kamarada. I loved the critique of capitalist culture and the pressure to conform to society's expectations and norms. Four out of five stars. Beartown by Frederick Bachman. This was a really difficult book to read about SA and the influence of sports culture on who we choose to believe and how we can raise these people up to be kind of like heroes and how problematic that can end up being and how harmful. Four out of five stars. The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazel. Would. Raylo fanfiction isn't my thing and neither are romance books where the man is described as three times her size and then we have to be reminded of it every five seconds. Two out of five stars. The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. For this one, I'll just quote my Goodreads review. I really suffered through this entire thing to get to the smut only to have him say, I want to feel you milking me baby while using a probably expired condom. One star. <laughs> People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Sweet and heartfelt, but I just felt like there was a little something missing. 3.5 out of 5 stars. One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Extremely underwhelming and lacking in terms of character development. And also the subway scene was a choice. 
2.75 out of 5 stars. Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, a fun steamier romance with well-written characters that also includes fat and disability rep, 3 out of 5 stars. Heartstopper Volumes 1 through 4, the most wholesome, heartwarming story about love, friendship, and identity that I wish I could have read as a kid, 5 out of 5 stars. You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao, underwhelming and not as emotional as I was expecting it to be for a story about grief, 3 out of 5 stars. Before the Coffee Gets Cold, a collection of connected stories about people who visit a time-traveling coffee shop that discusses themes of grief, loss, loneliness, love, and family that simultaneously feels like a warm hug and a hot cup of coffee. 4.5 out of 5 stars. The Girl from the Other Side, this is another manga. Spooky and gothic vibes mixed with themes of loneliness and isolation and an eerie art style make for the perfect combination in a series I will definitely be continuing. 4 out of 5 stars. My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshveg. A unique concept, but the story's message felt a bit shallow to me and just didn't fully land, and it's a book that I feel is a little bit overhyped. 3 out of 5 stars. Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. The one and only Sally Rooney book I actually like and will recommend. 4.25 out of 5 stars. My Dark Vanessa, one of the most disturbing yet empathetic books I've read about trauma, and in my opinion, it's the trauma plot done right. 5 out of 5 stars. The Idiot by Ilif Batuman. I truly had no idea what was going on the entire time, nor did I have any desire to know what was going on, but I can still understand why some people would like this book. 2 out of 5 stars. All About Love by Bell Hooks. I love Bell Hooks, and while this one wasn't my personal favorite, I still enjoyed it, and I'll definitely be reading anything I can by her in the future. 4 out of 5 stars. Blue Flag Volumes 1 through 8, a unique manga series about youth, identity, and the complicated line between platonic love and romantic love that is very similar to Heartstopper, just a little bit darker. 4 out of 5 stars. Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. People often criticize Sally Rooney for using her characters as mouthpieces for her ideologies in her books because it makes them feel less realistic and less like people. So in this book, she decided to, once again, use her characters as mouthpieces to respond to that criticism instead of just writing a blog post or an article. 1.75 to 2 out of 5 stars. Chicken with Plums by Majon Satrapi, a very short graphic novel about a man whose beloved instrument breaks and he becomes so depressed that he decides to just sleep and never get up again, which is incredibly relatable and iconic. 4 out of 5 stars. The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake, an overall very fun dark academia fantasy series that I feel like needs a little bit of work on the world building, but was otherwise enjoyable. 4 out of 5 stars. Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Everything about this screamed 2010 YA fantasy, but unfortunately not in a good way. 2 out of 5 stars. The Selection by Kira Cass. The main character is named America Singer, and she is a singer. 1.25 out of 5 stars. From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout, quite literally the worst written book I have ever read in my entire life, 1 out of 5 stars. Slammed by Colleen Hoover, Ezria 2.0 teacher-student relationship where the teacher reads his really bad slam poetry out loud to the class, so really he deserves to be in jail for two reasons. 1 out of 5 stars. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This is just bad Howl's Moving Castle fanfiction and nobody will ever convince me otherwise. 1.5 out of 5 stars. Spy Family Volumes 1 through 5. Found Family Shenanigans at its finest. 5 out of 5 stars. The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. A fantastic dark standalone fantasy novel with a mix of Jewish and Hungarian mythology and a bit of an enemies to lovers romance. 4 out of 5 stars. The Traveling Cat Chronicles. If you've ever had a cat, this will very likely make you cry, but unfortunately, I just wanted a little something more out of it. 3.75 to 4 out of 5 stars. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Studio Ghibli, and more specifically, Howl's Moving Castle vibes in a cozy, intriguing, romantic, standalone fantasy novel is quite literally all I could ever ask for. 5 out of 5 stars. Let Us Believe in the Beginning of the Cold Season by Furul Faroksad. The best poetry collection I have ever read, and I I would recommend it to absolutely everyone. 5 out of 5 stars. A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. Roy and Reza fan fiction at its best. 5 out of 5 stars. Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. One of the best romance books I've read, in large part due to the beautiful emotional writing. 4 out of 5 stars. The Charm Offensive. Easily my favorite romance book I've read so far. 5 out of 5 stars. Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Thoroughly enjoyable and perfect for any perfectionistic, workaholic eldest sister. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. A bit too cheesy at times for me and also a bit rushed, which made it difficult for me to connect with the characters. 3 out of 5 stars. 
A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. The perfect Regency romance for any Bridgerton fan. Just ignore the ugly cover and just focus on the wonderful writing, the passion between these characters, and the incredible trans rep. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This has slowly become one of my favorite books I've ever read because I have not been able to stop thinking about it since I read it. And if you like gothic horror and witches and discussions about abuse and power, you'll also love this one. 5 out of 5 stars. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I honestly don't have much to say about this other than it was much shorter than I was anticipating and I mostly just read it because I wanted to understand all of the references that are made to it. 3 out of 5 stars. Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. Truly one of the greatest and most intelligent books I have ever read, and I don't think I will ever be able to stop thinking about it. Five out of five stars. The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. You do not need to read about Anthony Bridgerton trying to suck the bee venom out of her chest. Just watch season two of the show instead. <laughs> two out of five stars. Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake. This book was trying to do way too much all at one time, so it felt really convoluted and pretentious, and unfortunately not in the fun way. 2.75 out of five stars. Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. A slow-paced gothic romance that I feel like I should have really loved, but ultimately was a bit underwhelming for me. Three out of five stars. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The best celebrity memoir and probably just one of the best memoirs I've ever read. Despite how difficult it was to get through, she told her story beautifully and honestly. Five out of five stars. Everyone in this room will someday be dead. Another book that I feel like I really should have loved, but I think literary fiction is either a hit or miss for me, and unfortunately this one was a miss three out of five stars. Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe. The first book in the series was much better than this one, and while I enjoyed some of the stories in this one too, I don't think I'll be continuing on with the series. Three out of five stars. Down Comes the Night by Alison Saft. Another gothic fantasy romance that was very enjoyable, but just not personally a favorite. Four out of five stars. If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. This book feels like it has lived in me forever, and it is also exactly the secret history, except actually gay, and so, so, so much better. Five out of five stars. Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. The vibes were all there for this one, but unfortunately there wasn't much else. 2.5 to 2.75 out of five stars. These Violent Delights by Micah Nemmer Ever. Imagine Will Graham and Hannibal Lecter go to college together in the 1980s. 3.75 out of five stars. Babel by R.F. Kuang. Easily one of my new favorite books of all time that resonated with me so deeply and also a novel that I think is incredibly important for anyone to read. Five out of five stars. Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Amide. This is literally just Get Out meets Gossip Girl, so if you like either of those two things, you'll probably like this, but you will also probably be able to very easily guess the plot of the story. Three out of five stars. Okay, we enter my Colleen Hoover era. <laughs> Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. The worst Life with Derek fanfiction you could possibly find on all of Wattpad. One out of five stars. November Nine by Colleen Hoover. Joe Goldberg tries his hand at arson. One out of five stars. It ends with us. Again, I'm gonna quote my Goodreads review. This is not a romance book, and it should come with trigger warnings for a number of reasons, including the fact that the main character is a florist named Lily Blossom Bloom who writes letters to Ellen DeGeneres. 1.5 out of five stars. Reminders of him. I never want to be reminded of this book ever again. 1.5 out of five stars. Verity. Please respect yourself and go read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier instead. One out of five stars. A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, a retelling of Dracula from the perspective of one of his wives that intricately explores themes of power and abuse. 4.25 out of five stars. And finally, the last book I read in 2022, Kiss Her Once For Me. Dramatic, funny, heartwarming, well-written, and definitely the best sapphic romance book I read this year. 4.25 out of five stars. And there you all have it. That is it for every book that I read in 2022 reviewed in one sentence. Thank you again to Jenny for the idea for this video. I'm not sure if she's the first person to have come up with it. She's just the first one I've seen to this video. So um, like I said, I'll leave her video link down below if you want to go watch it. But yeah, uh, this was a lot of fun. I will be back very soon with my reviews of like my favorite books of the year, my top 10 favorites, and then probably a top 10 worst books I read. It might be longer. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to do a top 10 and then maybe soon after that I'll just do like another popular books I hate video because it's been a while. It's been like several years since I've done one of those. But yeah, I also have my yearly TBR and and my most anticipated reads videos coming as well. So I hope you look forward to those and all of the other content that I have planned for the year. Thank you all so much for your support over this past year and supporting the new like series and stuff that I started doing last year. It was a lot of fun. I definitely plan to continue those. And I also plan to start some new ones as well that I'm excited about. And I hope you guys are too. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.